This is my Bible. It is the Word of God, and it is the will of God for my life. I am who the Word says I am. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the Word says I am, seated right now in Christ Jesus, in the heavenly realms, seated at the right hand of Father God. I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. And I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. Today my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. As I'm taught the Word of God, my life is changed for the better, and I'll never be the same again. Amen. Well, you may be seated. We are going to start off in 1 Samuel 17, 26. And we're in the series, How to Write Your Own Ticket with God. And the message this morning is, say it and do it. Say it and do it. In this series, How to Write Your Own Ticket with God, we've been talking about using four steps to write a ticket of victory. Say it, do it, receive it, and tell it. And we have said that if anybody anytime will take these four steps or put these four principles into operation, they will always receive whatever they want from the Lord Jesus Christ or from Father God. All over the Bible, you see these four steps employed or two or three of these steps employed before miracles happen. David and Goliath is one Old Testament example. In 1 Samuel 17, David said it, and David did it, and he defeated and killed the giant Goliath. Number one, step number one, David said it. David had been sent by his father Jesse to take provisions to his brothers who were fighting the Philistines in King Saul's army. When he got to the battlefield, he found the Philistines encamped on one side of the valley, and the Israelites encamped on the other side of the valley. And while David was there, a giant came out by the name of Goliath. You know the story. And Goliath was challenging the men of Israel to send out a man against him. Goliath said, if I defeat him, you will be our servants. And if he defeats me, we will be your servants. 1 Samuel 17, 26, David asked the men standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? The very first thing that David did was he said it. In fact, five times David said it before he did it. And David said, number one, of the five times, 1 Samuel 17, verse 32, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. And David said the second time, 1 Samuel 17, look at verse 34, but David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it and struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. I say to you this morning by the Spirit of God that we tolerate and put up with too much. Amen. We, I know, I know that they're after this whole idea of toxic masculinity, but this wussified, sissified generation is not going to receive anything from the Lord. There has got to be a spirit rise up on the inside of you 
Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And you got to have an attitude and a spirit. Ain't no stealing going on here. Ain't no killing going on here. Ain't no destroying going on here. And you got to have the spirit that rises up and goes after the lion and after the bear and get back what the devil tried to take from you. Hallelujah. And grab that sucker by the hair and slay it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you've got to learn how to do it on the little things so that when the bigger thing comes along, you're not going to be fearful. You're not going to be intimidated. You are going to have the spirit of David. I killed the lion and I killed the bear. Now I'm going to kill this uncircumcised Philistine. Is anybody getting it this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From the time of John the Baptist until now, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully or violently advancing and violent men take it by force. If you think the things of God are going to come on you like ripe fruit falling from a tree and hitting you on the head, you got another thing coming. There's got to be a a spirit of faith rise up on the inside of you and just a declaration come out of your mouth. Satan, you can't have my home. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my stuff. You can't have my money. You can't have my children. You're not going to do any stealing around here. Can I get a witness this morning? Can I get a shout of victory this morning? Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said the third time, 1 Samuel 17, look at verse 37. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And that's why we've been saying here at Faith Christian Center, you got to have testimonies. You got to go up against the lion. You got to go up against the bear. You got to get testimonies under your faith belt. I believe the best defense is a good offense. I believe what one of my fathers in the faith taught, you can put the devil to run enough times to where the devil doesn't want to mess with you because he knows he's not going to win going up against you. So he'll just go on down the road and find somebody that he can get some traction with. Say it out loud. The the devil is not getting any traction with me. You know, somebody just thought, well, you don't know what the devil already stole from me. You got to study the story of David and Ziklag. You can recover all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can run him out and recover all. I'm preaching victory here this morning. Someone might ask, what scripture was David standing on? None. There's no scripture in the Old Testament about killing giants. No promise. He didn't have word on it. David just knew that you can have what you say. David knew that he could write his own ticket with God, so he was writing it. David knew that God would do whatever David could believe him for. And there it is. David knew that God would do whatever David would believe him for. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it's in here. And David knew that God would do whatever David said God would do. The the revelation is blinding. Because people are writing their own ticket with God 
in the negative. They're saying that God can't do this or God won't do that. God, David knew God would do whatever David said God would do. You haven't gotten it yet. David knew that God would do whatever David said God would do. You're getting there. David knew that God would do whatever David said God would do. And he will for you too. Kenneth Hagin used to say the reason the Lord isn't doing any more in your life is because you're not believing him for any more. In fact, all of you are, and all you are, and all you have today is the result of what you have believed and said and done yesterday. All you are, and all that you have today is the result of what you have believed and said and done in the years and the months gone by. So if you're at the bottom of the ladder, that's because that's all you believed him for. And because that's all you believed him for, that's all you said. We know what you're believing God for by what's coming out of your mouth. And so does the Lord. If you'll start believing right and talking right, you'll get to the top. You know the story how Saul wanted to give his armor to David. But David wouldn't take it because it was too large and too heavy for him, for he was just a boy. So David went out with just his shepherd's sling and three smooth stones. And the Bible says that when Goliath saw David, he despised him. For he saw that David was just a boy, and so he cursed David by the names of his gods. And Goliath said he would take David's head off his shoulders. And with many other words, Goliath insulted the boy David. And David just let him talk. But when Goliath got done talking, David had something to say. And the fourth time David said, and David said, number four, 1 Samuel 17, 45, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied this day. See, faith is now. I said faith is now. He didn't say, Goliath, the Lord's going to take care of you someday. I think it was uh, a week or two ago we talked about how say, saying the Lord, I know the Lord is going to heal me is an unscriptural confession. Faith is now. Ha, hallelujah. I said faith is now. This day. The Lord will hand you over to me and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Yes, David had some of that, what the world calls it now, toxic masculinity going for him. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. I thank God I'd rather have some toxic masculinity than some impotent effeminacy. Hallelujah. Yeah, this day. Today I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. How is this world, how is this generation going to know that Yahweh God is God if you don't have a testimony? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David was still writing his own ticket with God. And David said the fifth time, 
1 Samuel 17, 47, all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give all of you into our hands. And that's one reason why we don't win at the battles of life, because we are trying to fight the battles of life. Say it out loud, the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. Say it again, the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. And another reason we don't win at the battles of life is that when we do win at the battles of life, we take the credit. I did this because I was so smart. I made that money because I was so, so shrewd. I made number one because I was more diligent than everybody else. We have to learn how to deflect the credit and the glory to the Lord in order to make the battle the Lord's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout it like thunder. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. So now, he's not just confessing he's going to kill Goliath. We're going to kill y'all. Amen. If he had been from Texas, that's what he would have said. He'd have said, we're going to kill y'all. And I know, I know that in this wussified generation, I know people have trouble with the Old Testament. I understand. I get it. I do. Sensitive souls think that they have more mercy than God. I have no problem with the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I got no problem with any of it. My attitude is if God wanted them dead, they ought to be dead. If God wants them dead, there's a reason they must need to be dead. And you got to watch it. You got to watch it going to these cool churches because if you come to the conclusion that you're more, more merciful than God, you'll talk your way right into hell. Why is there a place called hell? Well, because folks deserve it. I used to till I got saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the answer. Well, you know, you talk about how there's judgment coming and the great tribulation coming and missing the rapture and all of that. How is that even fair? It's fair. You can get saved. You talk about the curse of the law. How's that fair? You can get saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to stay outside in the hailstorm. You can come in under the ark of God. You don't have to drown in Noah's flood. You can come into the ark of God. You don't have to miss the rapture and experience the Antichrist. You can come into the ark of God. You don't have to live your life with your tail kicked by the devil. You can come into the ark of God. You can let the spirit of faith rise up on the inside of you. You can take charge of your life. You can begin to command your circumstances. You can begin to win and overcome and prevail by having the word of God in your heart and the word of God coming out of your mouth. Hallelujah. What one man can do, another man can do. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to just speak to stuff. Stand up. I saw myself do this during the worship service. See, we got to speak to stuff. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. (laughs) 
Now, I take offense when people important to me get attacked. But that's not why I just did what I did. The Lord explained it to me this way about six weeks ago out on a chilly Sunday morning. I was down by the gate, and he explained to me, it's so simple, the difference between faith and Pentecostalism. He said, faith, the principles of faith are your foundation. But he said, if you stay there, you can get limited results, and it can get awful dry. He said, following the leading of the Holy Spirit if it's not based on the foundation of the word and faith, can get weird. That's Pentecostalism. He said, so the way to operate, and I, when, he, when, he, when he came out of his spirit mouth into my spirit man, I immediately knew what he was talking about because that's the way Kenneth Hagin operated. Being led by the spirit on top of a foundation of the word and faith. So you don't have weirdness. And because the Lord led me to do that that way here, probably it'll never be, it'll never happen again for the rest of my life. Pentecostalism is when you take up something the Lord said and you make a doctrine out of it. And so now everybody's got to say you're be healed five times. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Somebody screamed at the Lord all night and got baptized in the Holy Spirit. So now... You got to scream all night at the Lord to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Somebody fell down and got healed. So now everybody's got to fall down and get healed. Do you understand? That is Pentecostalism. Trying to be led by the Spirit without a base and a foundation of faith and the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if we will build the, the foundation of faith and the word of God and then be led by the Holy Spirit on top of that, we're going to get some serious results. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, buddy. And then the, the, the thing is, we don't want to do this stuff because of fear. And the reason... Satan can buffet you with fear is only because you're worried about your reputation. I have no reputation. I'm only concerned about his reputation. Right. If I look bad, why would I care? Because I've looked bad 63 years. No, 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 no. He is the one that receives all the credit, the glory, and the honor. We guard his reputation. We don't guard our reputation. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, but how do you know? <laughs> yeah, but I went to church and they told me, you never know what the Lord will do. Nonsense. The Lord will do whatever you say the Lord will do. Somebody's getting it. I said the Lord will do Whatever you say, the Lord will do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. This is the juice. Do you see it? Say it. Shout it like thunder. The Lord will do whatever I say, the Lord will do. Now, you understand that's based on that bedrock, that foundation of faith and the Word of God. You cannot say God's going to make me the biggest cocaine dealer in Kennedale, Texas. You can't. In other words, a stupid doesn't work at Faith Christian Center. Amen. That's right. But anything you confess based on that foundation of the Word of God, man, I've discovered it. And I discovered it a long time back. God will, I, I said it this way forever. God will meet you at whatever point you can believe him at. Amen. 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 But now we're learning something else. Five times. David said it before he acted on it. Five times. David said it before he acted on it. And David said. And David said. And David said. And David said. And David said and David said, some of might say, you know, this wears me out. All of this meditation and all of this confession and all of this tithing business, it wears me out. 
Well, that's because you haven't had the joy of the harvest. Once you come into the joy of the harvest, I don't ever get tired of not being sick. I don't ever get tired of not being poor. I don't ever get tired of not being broke. Hallelujah. I don't ever get tired of not taking any pills. Hallelujah. I don't ever get tired of not ever having any pain. Hallelujah. I don't ever get tired of victory. Hallelujah. That's the first thing David did. He said it. In a generation when the average man was five foot, five inches tall, and Goliath stood between 10 and 13 feet, and David was just a boy, how could a little old 17-year-old country boy exhibit such bravery in the face of such a threat? How did David know what God would do? People want you to believe you can never tell what may happen. In fact, that's the cliche. Well, you never know what will happen. People want you to believe you can never tell what God will or will not do. Kenneth Hagin used to say, if you'll do everything God says to do, he'll do everything you'll believe him to do. David just knew you can have what you say. David knew he could write his own ticket with God, so he was writing it. David knew that God would do whatever David could believe him for, and David knew that God would do whatever David said God would do. Did you get that? David knew that God would ever do that God would do whatever David could believe him for, and David knew that God would do whatever David said he would do. So what are you saying God can do? And what are you saying God cannot do? Praise God, you can write your own ticket with God. And whether you know it or not, that is what you have been doing. For you can have what you say. Yes, you can have what you say in the positive, or you can have what you say in the negative. But both positive and negative, you'll end up having what you say. Without even knowing you've done so, you've been writing your own ticket with God. Some of you in the positive, some of you in the negative. But whether positive or negative, either way, you've been writing your own ticket with God. Now hear me now. So many have gone out from us not believing they could write their own ticket with God. They went out from us, yet they still wrote their own ticket with God, but they wrote their own ticket with God in the negative. You see, because we have Adam's seed on the inside of us. I want you to hear it now. Because we have Adam's seed on the inside of us, we need constant training. We need constant teaching. We need constant renewing of the mind. We need constant positive confession to stay on the positive side and avoid the negative side because we have Adam's seed in us. There's just a default to the negative. I know, I know people, they say, well, you know, they only say you need to be in church every time the doors are open because they're pastors. No. We say you need to be in church every time the doors are open because we see the results of a lifestyle of being in church when the doors are open. If I can go negative without constantly renewing my mind, constant prayer, constant meditation in the Word, what hope do you have? Amen. I'm doing this full time, and I have got to guard my heart, and I have got to watch my hearing. Amen. Well, you're not doing this full time. You're doing this part time. That's why Solomon said, above all else, guard your heart. That's why Jesus said, be careful how you listen. Because we are hardwired by that seed of Adam to go negative. 
It is only by constant training, constant teaching, constant renewing of the mind, and a constant, consistent, positive confession that we stay on the positive side and avoid the negative. That's why Paul wrote in Romans 12, 1 and 2, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. They went out from us, and they still wrote their own ticket with God, but they wrote their own ticket with God in the negative. Well, praise God, I'm still standing right here. And praise God, I'm still writing my own ticket with God in the positive. And not only am I writing my own ticket with God in the positive, I'm ramping it up in 2019. I said I'm ramping it up in 2019. Somebody, somebody might say, oh, pastor, you're blessed enough. No, 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 no. I know God will do whatever I say God will do. I know God will do whatever I can believe God to do. So why should I stay here? Why should I stay here? Hallelujah. Why should I get a, why should I be happy with a B plus when I can go for an A minus? Amen. David knew exactly what God would do on that battlefield against Goliath. Are you hearing me? There? Church, David knew if, if there had been a, a shadow of doubt in his mind, he wouldn't have gone. He knew. I love what Fred Price used to say. We do not go in to the battle with the devil we don't go into the ring to find out who is the champion. We go into the ring as God's people because we are the champion. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We go into a fight. That's why Paul called it a good fight of faith. Growing up in Detroit, I was in a lot of fights. My last fight was in junior high school. I, I was in a lot of fights, and I'm here to testify. There's only one good fight, and that's a fight you win. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's the only fight we're supposed to be fighting. We're not supposed to be fighting the government. We're not supposed to be fighting City Hall. We're not supposed to be fighting all this stuff. We fight the fight of faith. We win our victory in the realm of faith. We win our healing in the realm of faith. We win our financial victories in the realm of faith. If you have a wayward child or a wayward grandchild, we wage our war in the realm of faith. If Satan can get you into the realm of reason, he'll defeat you every time. But if you can keep Satan in the realm of faith, you'll defeat him every time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For we walk by faith and not by sight. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David knew exactly what God would do on that battlefield against Goliath because David had slain the lion and because David had slain the bear and because David had faith in God and because David said what God would do and because David said what God would do five times. David knew exactly what God would do because he was writing his own ticket with God and praise God, you can write your own ticket with God too. Number two, step number two, David did it. And that's why so many are defeated. They talk about it, but they don't do it. Well, you know, like Zig Ziglar used to say, when my ship comes in. Well, your ship's not coming in because you never sent one out. The Bible says, cast your bread on the water, and after many days it will return. Well, no point in waiting for your bread to return if you didn't ca cast any bread out. It's not just a matter of faith. It's not just a matter of talk. It is a matter of action. David said it, and David did it. Just like that woman with the issue of blood in Mark 5, David said it, said it, and David did it. Just like the woman with the issue of blood in Mark 5 said it and did it, David said it and did it. I'm not bragging to myself, but this story comes to me. When we were up at I-30, 
And we went through the process of meeting with lenders. Finally found somebody that would lend us some money on this project. Borrowing every nickel they would lend us. Borrowing every nickel they would lend us. We were still short. We couldn't do the ball fields, couldn't do the third parking lot, couldn't do the third floor, couldn't even do the second floor. And we were still a half a million short. But I didn't just say it. What did I do? I did it. And then I was so crazy. I was crazy. Some of y'all need to get crazy. I was so crazy, I said, not only will it all be built, but the day we move in, we'll have more money than the day we began. And, and, I said, not only that, we will not move one stick of old furniture from the old building to the new, because the Bible says, get rid of the old. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you see it? I said it. But then you got to have the holy guts. I know we're not all male here, but those of us that are, or you suspect you are, you got to have some of that toxic masculinity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to have some holy guts to just act like the word of God is so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Talk like the word of God is so. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we moved in here, and the day we moved in here, we had more money, cash on hand, the, the, the day we began. Second floor was done, third floor was done, ball fields were done, playgrounds were done, third parking lot was done, and there was not one stick of old furniture, except a couple of sentimental pieces. That's it. Hallelujah. My God will do whatever I can believe him to do, and my God will do whatever I say he can do. I said, my God will do whatever I can believe him to do, and my God will do whatever I say he can do. All right, third pass. My God will do whatever I can believe him to do, and my God will do whatever I say he can do. Fourth pass. My God will do whatever I can believe him to do, and my God will do whatever I say he can do. All right, all right, get ready, get ready, get ready. Fifth pass. My God will do whatever I can believe him to do, and my God will do whatever I say he can do.